Good evening, I'm Marissa Semkew. Thanks for watching. Ukraine stands alone. That's the topic of tonight's byline. For the last few months, we've been covering very closely the situation in Ukraine. What began as an uprising against a corrupt government has turned into a full-blown war. Some might call it a conflict or civil strife or separatist uprising or whatever other euphemism that's currently favored. You'll also note that I'm refraining from referring to pro-Russian rebels or any other ridiculous term like that. Let's stop beating around the bush. It's a war. Vladimir Putin's attacking a sovereign state, although they won't just come out and say it. Yesterday, the Pentagon revealed that Russia's firing artillery from its own territory into Ukraine. Shells are crossing an international border. The U.S. State Department said Russia is now boosting its military shipments to its proxy fighters in East Ukraine, as if the previous shipments we've seen over the last few months were somehow insufficient. We have new evidence uh, that the Russians intend to deliver heavier and more powerful multiple rocket launchers to the separatist forces in Ukraine and have evidence that Russia is firing artillery, artillery from within Russia to attack Ukrainian military positions. All this comes on the heels of, shooting down, of the shooting down of a Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 that murdered 298 people on board, including one Canadian from Ajax, Ontario. Now, most lay the blame at Putin's feet, given Russia's been supplying them with advanced weaponry to attack Ukraine. Advanced weaponry like high-altitude surface-to-air missiles. But was it his intention to strike a civilian airliner? Maybe. Or maybe it was a terrible mistake. A number of Ukrainian military planes have been shot down in the east as of late. So shooting down a plane wasn't quite out of the norm. It's quite plausible that they thought they were shooting down another Ukrainian military plane. Regardless, what's clear is that rather than backing down, Following the murder of 298 civilians, Putin is doubling down. I've read and listened to countless experts explain how the West can counter the growing Russian threat. And there's a debate to be had about whether the U.S. should be sending weaponry to help the new Ukrainian government. So far, all we've seen from President Obama are a handful of visa bans and asset freezes on targeted players in Russia. But those sanctions aren't exactly going to bring down the Russian economy. You'll remember that Obama announced he was going to reset America's relations with Russia back in 2009. As with all things, he blamed Bush for hurting the relationship. How's that working out for you, Barack? I'd probably like to see, personally rather, like to see America take on a greater leadership role in the world to provide moral, cl moral clarity. And I'd suggest Obama stop trusting Putin on a host of other things. Missile defense, U.S. nuclear reductions, negotiations with Iran. And in fairness to Obama, shorten it of an all-out war, America doesn't have a ton of leverage in this situation. The U.S. doesn't have a huge economic relationship with Russia, but the European Union certainly does. So what about Europeans? Well, our perpetually two-faced ally France continues with its plans to deliver two aircraft carriers to Russia. That's perhaps the worst example, but the EU as a whole has rejected large sectoral sanctions. Why? Because perhaps it's, you know, Putin has their economies tied by their, well, you know. The European Union depends on Russia for around a third of its natural gas. The Baltic states receive 100% of their gas from Russia. Bulgaria, Slovakia, Hungary receive over 80%. Poland, the Czech Republic, Austria, Turkey, Greece, Slovenia, over half of their gas comes from Russia. And even Germany, Europe's industrial powerhouse, is dependent on Russia for nearly 40% of its gas. Just last month, Russia shut off natural gas to Ukraine, as it did previously in 2006 and in 2009. Do you see where I'm going with this? Europe's economy is tied to Russia. Actually, tied might actually be the wrong word. Given how the EU's acted lately, subservient might be the right term. But if Russia can reduce its dependence, it will undo Putin's leverage. That is the biggest problem. Europeans are dependent on Russia, and that's why the EU has only implemented small, targeted sanctions like the U.S. None have gone far enough to actually make a real dent in the Russian economy for fear of having their gas shut off. Going forward, things need to change so that when Putin wants to make moves on the Baltics or Poland, countries are able to actually grow a spine and counter the move. But Putin isn't going to make things easy. You might remember in June when the Secretary General of NATO came out and said that Russia's funding the environmental movement to spread fear about alternative sources of energy, such as shale fracking. Russia 
as part of their sophisticated uh, in information and disinformation operations engage actively with mm. so-called non-governmental organizations, environmental organizations working against shale gas, obviously, to uh, maintain European dependence uh, on imported Russian gas. That's my interpretation. Lennon spoke about useful idiots, and the environmentalists are only too happy to oblige, it seems. Here's the stark reality. Think of Putin as a drug dealer. The Europeans are a bunch of junkies. Putin's going to make sure they don't kick the habit. Now, in fairness to the Eastern Europeans, they recognize the threat. Those who lived behind the Iron Curtain under Moscow's rule don't want to go back there. But the Western Europeans have deluded themselves into thinking they can live comfortably. That geographic space alone can save them. Sorry, the European economies are interconnected now. As I said yesterday, while the Berlin Wall might have fallen and the Soviet Union rightfully lies in the ash heap of history, it is clear Putin is unwilling to surrender Russian control over Eastern Europe. But with too many European governments unwilling to consider other sources of energy, unwilling to get off the drug of Russian gas, it remains doubtful that Putin's stranglehold over the continent will come to an end anytime soon. And that's the byline. <laughs>